they're talking about stops your brain from being able to, to it, it stops what they call the saturation point. You don't understand that you've had enough. You can't. Your brain, um, the dopamine pathways that, that you have lead to two things. The limbic system is one of emotion, um, your reward pathways essentially, and the hippocampus, which is your one of memory. And the two together create actual neural pathways in your brain. So the more fast food you eat, the more likely you are to eat more of it. Um, and, and unless you know that, you, you, um, this is all happening to you instead of for you. Um, I think I'm, I'm probably confusing you. But the experiments, here's, here's the kind of experiments that they ran. They took food that rats kind of like, and they put it in one corner of a, of a cage. They took foods that rats can't resist, and they poisoned it in such a way that it made the rats sick. And they put it in the other cor corner of the cage. Then they put the rats in, and the first thing the rats did was run to the corner of the cage for the food they really like, eat it up, and get sick. Um, normally, then the, the rats avoid that food for the next week or so. It takes about a week for them to forget about it, unless they alter the fat to sugar ratio of it. And when they alter the fat to sugar ratio, the, fats, the, the rats will eat it anyway, even though they know they're going to get sick. They can't stop themselves. Um, that's what's happening to us. That's what the food industry has been doing on purpose. Um, and um, why do you think that, that your proportions are so big? So what makes me different is that I can't do it. You know the freshman 15 pounds that everyone gains their first, their first month of college, their first semester of college? I lost weight because I couldn't eat the dorm food. Because my parents didn't eat it, I don't have the same, the same neural pathways naturally. Um, so well, there are some things I will overeat. Um, if you take me out to Nobu, I will overeat on, on brilliant sushi. Um, but at you know, $200 a person, that's, uh, somebody else has to pay for it. Um, <laughs> but I can't, I can't stomach some of the food. I'd, I'd, I'd rather go hungry. And it's only because my brain is wired differently. So what I want you guys to do is understand enough about, about this so that you can do the wiring of your brain. Wire it any way you want to. It's your brain. Um, but understand and don't let things be done to you. Do it yourself. So here's one more thing I want to, to, to oops, we're going up. We should be going down. Um, so what's happening with the commercially prepared foods is that it's t it, they are taking over you. And, and one of the, um, the things that they found about um, obesity in particular is that it has exactly the same neural responses as any other form of addiction. Um, you become conditioned to it. You become unable to stop it. And that, I think, um, not only is it, is it dangerous for you physically, but I find that per particularly offensive, that someone that some one or some group of people would believe that, that they, should, they can do that to me. I, I want the control of, over my own body to do so that I can do whatever I want to do. So now, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the science. Go read the books. Um, if, like me, can you guys hear me okay if I just shout for a second? Any yeah. 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 If, like me, your, um, your finances have taken a rather um, abrupt downward turn in this, um, it, um, current, in this current economy, you probably need to do a lot of cooking for yourself. I recommend two books, or at least two, um, two, two groups of people. The first is Cooks Illustrated. Has anybody heard of this? Oh, yeah. Yes. Cooks Illustrated is a science for cooking. What, what they, they basically hack ingredients. And what, whether it's something they're interested in, like making scones or something somebody's written them to and say, how do I do this? They take a recipe. They then alter the, the temperature that you're baking it at by 15 degrees or by 10 minutes longer. Or they change the level of fluids. And they, they make 50 different batches of something and figure out which one tastes the best. So in the science of cooking, um, Cook's Illustrated is, is where I would go to. We've never had a recipe that they have recommended fail, not once. Um, and we have, yeah. It's a great magazine, great website. Um, you can just go to cooksillustrated.com and figure out what you want to make that day. And I, I guarantee um, you might not, you might not um, agree with some of their flavor choices, but they give you all sorts of different options and why. <coughs> the second thing I recommend is the Flavor Bible. 
and this is fun. Somebody has taken all the characteristics of everything you can think of, every single ingredient, um, and created an analog database of what it is, what its, what its flavor notes are, and what it's gonna go with. Um, so if you open your refrigerator and you have almonds and parsley, you can search in here for almonds and parsley and figure out what you can make with them and why. This is very fun. A friend of mine, by the way, the woman who, who um, designed the Half Bakery, I don't know if you're familiar with that, she's putting this all into the online database format, so eventually we'll all be, we'll be able to search it. I don't know if she'll, she'll publicize it or not. But um, I'll, I'll pass both of these around. Um, feel free. Uh, this, is, this is so much fun. This just took to, um, to go through. And now, let's taste stuff. Okay. So, how many of you have ever been to a chocolate tasting before? Okay, then you already know what I'm going to talk about. Um, I chose chocolate instead of something else like cheese. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's more approachable for most people. But like, like wines, like cheeses, chocolate is a very complex food. And therefore, it's, um, it's a good thing to, to try when you first experiment. Um, so... What I want you to do is I want to open, you open up your, ba your bags and take out those four little bags. Does everybody have a bag? Yeah, does, does anyone need a, a bag and a, and a um, score sheet? Okay. So, I don't know how readable that is. That's a chocolate tasting wheel. These are how, how the experts divide, um, render back there. Um, this is how the experts divide um, the chocolate flavor notes. Sweet, chocolatey, aromatic, roasted, earthy, medicinal, fruity, and dairy. You also sometimes get things like citrus. Um, and in that, of course, there are all these other subcategories like caramel or nutty or, um, or whatever. Um, and I wish I had one of these for everybody, but I don't. But I'll put it back up on, on the screen for us later. Oh, what did I do? Hold on. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of chocolate. Whoever's computer this is, come back and fix it. Um, um, you're going to take, take a piece of chocolate. It doesn't matter which because the bags are numbered. Just remember for your sake which, which number it is. And I want you to look at it. One of the wonderful things about, about the, the taste interface of your body is that it of all of your, thank you, of all of your, um, your senses, this is the only one that combines. It combines sight, it combines smell, it combines touch, and it combines taste. Okay? So, so the first thing I want you to do is pull out a piece of chocolate. Just remember what bag it's in because you're going to have to know what number it is to mark it on your sheet. The contest is, um, it, the, the, the checklist that you have on your sheet of paper contains what the experts think of a particular chocolate, one of the ones that's in your bag, okay? Your job is to, t is to taste the, each of the chocolates, and by the way, in each of your bags is crackers so that you can um, have a piece of cracker in between chocolate so that you can, um, you can clear your palate, okay? Your job is to see if you can match what the experts think, and if you can, you get a bar of Lindt's Weihnacht Schokolade. This stuff, if Christmas had a flavor, this would be it. Um, <laughs> it is only available between November and December, and it's not available in the US at all. Um, I order this from Germany every year, and it costs me as much to ship it as it does to, um, to actually, as the bars themselves cost. And it is worth every penny, okay? So, um, yes? Okay. The first, the, you are going to let it melt on your tongue. Chocolate cannot be tasted unless it melts, which is why the fat content is so important. Um, so smell it, look at it. Is it shiny? Is it, is it variegated in texture? Is it smooth? And then let it melt on your tongue. And then see what you taste. Breathe in. Breathe in through your mouth. All of these, by the way, are um, top chocolatiers, so you don't have to worry. You're not getting crap. 